Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for September 7th, 2014. It's currently 9.40 a.m. We're getting ready for the first full football Sunday that is on the way for your Jets, Giants, Eagles, and for my Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Spent several years out in the Plains, and uh, it's one of my favorite teams. So, no ill will to the Giants or Jets or Eagles. Uh, hopefully, they all win. Or lose, depending on your point of view. So, what do we have in place here? A fall air mass. Cool, comfortable, tranquil, low humidity. Perfect for this time of year. We have temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 60s, even a few upper 50s over the northern interior. Mid to upper 60s over the western suburbs of Philadelphia and New York City. And upper 60s to lower 70s along the coast and in the urban areas. We still have that polar air mass slowly building into the region. As a result, temperatures today will range from the mid to upper 70s for highs throughout the entire Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area. Temperatures will remain pretty much near normal for this time of year. Dew points will continue to fall through the day, ranging basically in the mid to upper 50s this afternoon. So all those lower 60s right along the coast will be falling off and you'll definitely feel the difference with a much drier, more comfortable air mass in place. Far different than yesterday's tropical air mass that led to some very strong and severe thunderstorms that took power out in portions of central New Jersey and also portions of the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan area. But all of that is gone now with clear skies, but there is some trouble brewing to the south and east. Taking a look at the surface map, high pressure is in control over the Great Lakes and that's building into our neck of the woods. We have another polar cold front that is over the Great Lakes and over portions of central Canada. And then we have this area of low pressure here over the Gulf Coast and here over portions of eastern Texas. Now we have a little disturbance here. I'm going to show you under water vapor satellite picture and we're going to watch to see the development of this low pressure system because what's going to happen is that this low pressure system will ride up along this stalling cold front boundary and as it's doing so it'll start to organize and intensify and lift up through the New Jersey coastal waters tomorrow through Tuesday producing the threat for scad showers especially along the immediate coast. I think it's as you go further north and west into the interior, and especially to the west of the Delaware River, the threat for your showers reduces dramatically. Most likely, most locations will remain dry. However, as you head along the coast, I'm a little bit concerned here because this low pressure system will have some minor tropical characteristics with it, and that will mean the potential for some very heavy downpours. So there is a threat for a surprise heavy rainfall event right along the immediate coast. And I mean, if you go 15 miles further inland, just a few scattered showers. But right along the coast, right along the New Jersey coast, right along the south shore of Long Island, I think there's a threat here where this rainfall could be a little bit heavier than what some of the model guidance is suggesting. So we really have to watch to see the development of this low pressure system over the next 48 hours. On the radar, kind of pivot back towards the south and west to give you a view of the southeast here. Clearly, we're drying out here, not any threat for any precipitation for today. But you can see these scattered showers kind of developing over the coastal waters of the southeast. And we do have a few showers over the Tennessee River Valley. And what I'm concerned about is that some of this moisture kind of rides right along the coast here and just basically trims or skims portions of the New Jersey coast and over southern Long Island. So we're going to, have to really watch this area of low pressure as it tries to develop. On the infrared satellite picture, you can see we're clearing out high pressure and full control, very comfortable weather conditions today. Again, here is that little trough here that we're watching that's been festering down here over the southeast. And here we have our stronger polar disturbance that is approaching. Now on the water vapor satellite picture, you see that a little bit better, a little bit of a carved out little disturbance here. And you can see all that tropical moisture just festering over here over the uh, southeast coastal waters. And you can see that interaction between the polar air and our subtropical, uh, should I say the um, tropical air mass that is sitting up here over the southeast coast, right along the Gulf Stream, which I point out perfectly right along the Gulf Stream. 
So there's a lot of interesting factors coming together here for the next 48 hours, 48 to 66 hours. And we're going to have to watch to see how this evolves and how this develops moving forward, especially as this low pressure system sets up right about here to the south of Long Island by the time we get into Tuesday morning. So again, I'm not expecting a major storm like what the Canadian model guidance is showing, but I think it's going to be a little bit better organized than what the 0Z European model guidance is suggesting, which is almost no low pressure system. So I'm kind of going in between here and using the GFS model guidance for now, as I think it's the best in between consensus of all the guidance here that we have in place and the best handling of all the actual features that are on the playing field, so to speak. So we're going to, have to watch this low pressure system. And then after this low pressure system exits, we have another strong polar cold front that will move through by the end of the week. And that will keep us on the cool side. We'll have one warm day where temperatures are slightly above normal. We're talking about lower to mid 80s. No sign whatsoever of 90s the rest of the month. So a little bit of good news there. The warmest I think we get on Thursday is about 85 degrees uh, with some increasing humidity as that cold front approaches from the west. But then next weekend, we fall right back to near to below normal temperatures with temperatures over the interior falling into the mid 40s for lowest possibly by the end of next week and into the weekend. So let's take a look at the latest GFS model guidance from the Penn State UL website. Again, for today, high pressure and control, very comfortable. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s for highs. For tonight, clouds will start to increase as our high pressure system shifts towards the Canadian Maritimes. Our area low pressure starts to organize over the southeast. For tomorrow, increasing clouds throughout the region. Winds veer to the northeast at around 5 to 15 miles per hour, increasing to 10 to 20 miles per hour along the coast. Our area low pressure starts to organize. Scattered showers start to push into the region. I think as you are close to the coast, you have a better chance of seeing scattered showers. Tomorrow evening and overnight tomorrow, that area low pressure will become better organized. Focus of scattered showers along the coast. By the way, here comes our polar cold front. You can see with that really strong thermal gradient setting up. This is a very impressive polar high pressure system driving into the northern plains with a very strong cold front on the way. So again, it looks like it's going to be a very interesting forecast over the next 48 to 66 hours as we have a strong polar air mass invading the United States over the northern plains and area low pressure moving up the east coast. By the time we get to Tuesday, that area low pressure really starts to get itself organized. Now again, the difference between the models, the European model guidance has almost no low pressure system here, just a trough. The Canadian model guidance has a monster storm over the same location right about here with a rapidly intensifying area low pressure and very heavy rainfall along the coast. And the GFS is somewhere in between with an area low pressure developing, but not a monster storm like the, what the Canadian model guidance is showing. So again, I'm kind of going in between here. Based on the data I have in front of me, I really don't have support for a monster powerful storm at this time. We have to watch this, don't get me wrong, especially with the thermal gradient in place over the northwestern Atlantic, but I'm not ready to go that route just yet. So look for scattered showers, possibly a few heavier downpours right along the immediate New Jersey coast and over southern Long Island. I think as you head further north and west, those showers become more widely scattered to isolated, and as you head up into the northern interior, let's say northeastern Pennsylvania, only an isolated shower is a threat on Monday and Tuesday. By the time we get to Wednesday, we're kind of in between areas of low pressure. A few isolated to widely scattered showers are possible. Most locations will remain dry. Temperatures will range. Now, let me backtrack here. Monday and Tuesday, temperatures range in the upper 50s to lower 60s. High temperatures in the lower to mid 70s. Rather cool for this time of year. By the time we get to Wednesday now, we have temperatures in the upper 50s to lower 60s for lows, mid to upper 70s for highs, a few lower 80s possible in the Philadelphia metropolitan area. Thursday, our cold front approaches from the west. We have a strong southwesterly flow. So ahead of the cold front, temperatures will range from the lower to mid 60s for lows. A few upper 60s are possible right along the coast. High temperatures in the lower to mid 80s throughout the entire Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area. Then that cold front moves through with showers and thunderstorms on Thursday evening. Friday morning, we slowly clear out with clearing skies, 
By the time we get to Friday afternoon, high pressures in control, that is the Canadian polar high pressure system. Temperatures on Friday will be pretty interesting to watch. Mid to upper 60s for lows as that polar air starts to build in. Because the air is sinking and it's coming off the Appalachian Mountains, temperatures will remain rather warm for this time of year, upper 70s to lower 80s over the Delaware River Valley and uh, over uh, portions of the Philadelphia metro, upper 70s in the New York City metropolitan area. And then for Saturday and Sunday for next weekend, high pressure and control, clear skies, comfortable weather conditions, low humidity, and get this for temperatures over the interior next weekend, I would not be surprised to see mid to upper 40s for lows, lower to mid 50s for highs, high temperatures in the lower to mid 70s right along the immediate coast, and mid to upper 70s everywhere else on Saturday. On Sunday, mid 70s throughout the entire Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area with low humidity and temperatures averaging a little bit below normal. So that's your forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen Martino. Follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and LinkedIn. As always, have a wonderful day and stay safe out there.